A filter action allows us to narrow down or limit the data that we are showing on our views or our dashboards. Note that with a filter action, these are the options that we have. We have a name, we have the source sheets, the target sheets. We can run the action on hover, select, menu. We also have a choice of what to do when the selection is cleared, and we can also define which fields we're going to use for filter. To demo actions, we are going to use this sample workbook. This workbook uses the sample Superstore dataset that comes with your Tableau desktop installation, so you should be able to recreate majority of these. What I have here are two dashboards. One is an overview dashboard and another dashboard that has customer details. Now let's take a look at each individual worksheet. In the overview dashboard, we have three sheets. One is a sales map. Another one is a line chart, sales over time by segment. And we have a scatter plot, sales versus profit over time. And this is subdivided by customers in each individual segment. Let's first take a look at one of the easiest ways to add a filter action in Tableau. You can select a view. And from here, you can see a couple different places where you can easily use this chart as a filter to all other views in this dashboard. So let's click on the drop down on the top right corner, and this is what you're going to see. There is an option there to use this as filter. The shortcut is to use this icon, which is a filter icon. And what that means is when you select any items in this chart, you can pass values that are common between the charts and then use those to filter all the other charts in this dashboard. So let's click this uses filter icon and notice what happens to these two charts as I click around the map. So for example, in here, if I look at Eugene, Oregon, all of a sudden, you're going to see the other two charts, sales over time and sales versus profit, narrow down the data to only the records related to this city and state. When we deselect by default, this shows all the information again. Let's try this one more time. Let's hover over and maybe let's look at Anaheim, California. And in here, we can see that there are more points for Anaheim, California that is showing up on these two charts. So exactly what happened? Let's take a look at the worksheets first. If I go to the sales over time worksheet, what I will see is there's now a brand new filter that is introduced in the filter shelf. This is in italics, and this tells us that this is coming from an action, and it's from the combination of values city, comma, state. We should be able to see the same thing for sales versus profit. If we expand this, there is a filter action for Anaheim, California as well. Let's go back to our dashboard. Let's investigate this further. When we go to the dashboard menu at the very top and we select actions, what we are also seeing is there is a brand new entry in our actions. This is a filter action. We can see that from the icon. It's running on select and it's giving us information on the source. This also tells us that it uses all possible fields. So let's edit this action and take a look at the default configuration. Click on edit. So these are the default configurations. This is the name. The source sheet is just the map from the overview dashboard. This is running on select. That's what's selected right now. The target sheet is everything in the dashboard. And when we clear the selection, we are going to show all values. As far as the filter is concerned, it is using all common fields to filter the other charts. So let's make some adjustments to better understand how filter actions work. Let us start by changing the run action on. Instead of select, let's choose hover. When we hover, what happens? Once I click OK and click OK and go back to my dashboard, let's deselect for now. Notice in here that as I hover over all of these different points in the map, the other two charts change almost instantaneously because this means we don't have to click through each of the items. All we need to do is to move the mouse pointer over to those marks. And that is what hover does. When we move the mouse pointer away, that is equivalent to deselecting and it's going to show all the information again. Let's go back to dashboard and actions. Let's edit this action again. So edit. This time around, let us select menu. And that's the only thing we're going to change for now so that we can see how other components are affecting this particular action. Notice as well that we haven't changed the name. The name is still filter one generated. Once we click OK and click OK again, now what happens is as we select certain points, it's actually not going to change the other two charts. It's not going to filter the other two charts. But what it's going to give us is a tooltip by default that has a hyperlink. So we need to click on this link first before the filtering happens. So when we click on this right now, let's try that again. Click on this. That is the only time that the other two charts are filtered. Now, when we are running an action on menu, we need to make sure that we have meaningful names. Let's go back and let's change the name. 
So dashboard actions. And from here, because this is going to show up as a hyperlink, so let's click on edit. In here, we can make this a little bit more meaningful. So for example, we're going to say that we're going to filter other charts by and we can insert values that are coming from that one sheet. And from there, we have our city, space, and then state. Okay, and click OK, and click OK. So let's give this another shot. If we select a certain city, and this now shows the actual city and state name, and now we can filter the other charts. Let's go back to Dashboard, Actions. Let's click on Edit again. Let us now look at this section. Perhaps we want to only target the time series chart as well as adjust what happens when we clear the selection. For example, maybe we want to keep the filtered values. So in here, let's uncheck sales versus profit. We should be able to see that the scatter plot does not change at all, and we are going to keep the filtered values. So click on OK, click on OK. So again, our expectation is this doesn't change, but this one will change. And once we deselect, it's going to keep the old values. Let's give it a try again. Let's say Burbank, California filter other charts by Burbank, California. And we should notice that this is the only one that changes. This scatter plot has not changed. And now when I deselect this mark, so select that again to deselect, this hasn't gone back to showing all the points. Let's try a few more combinations under dashboard, actions, edit this action. Let's target the sales versus profit now, and perhaps clearing the selection will exclude all values. So let's try that out. So click on sales versus profit, unselect sales over time, and then exclude all values once we deselect. So what happens? Click on OK and click on OK. So what this will do is it will not affect sales over time, but it will now affect the scatter plot. Now, when we deselect the mark, it means that this space in here will be empty. Let's select Burbank, California again. Click on that. Because this is still on menu, we still need to click on this link. This chart is not affected because this is not part of our target worksheets but the sales versus profit has changed. Once I deselect this mark, so deselect this one, it basically blanks out this particular chart. Let's adjust this one more time under Dashboard, Actions, and in here, we're just going to run this on Select, and we are going to go back to the original behavior. So this is going to be sales over time, and we're going to show all values once we deselect. So click on OK, click on OK. So let's try this again. Anaheim, California, both charts at the bottom, they have changed. Once we deselect, it's showing all the points again. However, for the sales map, the way this is constructed, let's actually go back to this sheet. The way this is constructed is you have two marks layers. So you have one that is specifically looking at state, and you have another one that is looking at both city and state. So if we make the city layer invisible, essentially what you're seeing is just a chloropleth map or a field map that only has state information. If we make state invisible, all we're seeing is really at the city level. But in here, it actually has two pieces of information. You have city and state. Now this causes some unusual behaviors with our action. Let's make state visible again. And let's go back to the overview dashboard and take a look at what happens if we select a state instead of a city. So overview dashboard, in here, for example, we click on Nevada, not any specific city in Nevada, but the state Nevada. So what is happening? Well, in here, it looks like the other two charts we have in this dashboard, they are not displaying any values. Why is that? Well, if we try to investigate and go back to this worksheet, so go back to this worksheet, we can see in here that the way the actions are working is it's going to assume the two pieces of information all the time. But because we clicked on state, it means that you don't have any city values and it's still going to try to match that up. So in this case, we are getting this unusual result because we don't have a city that is null. So in here, we can decide if we want all fields to be used as filter or only certain fields to be used as filter. So let's go back to actions right now. So dashboard actions, let's edit this filter again. And this time around, instead of all fields, we are going to select selected fields only. So selected fields, once we toggle, we're also getting an issue because of our current name right now, because these fields may not be available anymore with this particular action because we're only selecting certain fields. So let's clear the name for now. The error goes away. And in here, let us select only the state. So click to add, we're going to select the state, search for this. So state, 
and this is the only one we are going to use. So even if we click on the city, that is not going to be used for the filtering, but only the corresponding state. So let's see how this changes the behavior. Click on OK and OK again. And again, let's clear the screen. So let's try this one more time. If I click on a specific city in California, it will filter by all of California. It doesn't matter whether we click on a specific city, it's going to be just California. If we go to the sheet, it's only filtering by California. Let's go back to the overview dashboard. If we select Nevada this time, remember before this was empty, but this time around, it should show us some results because this is for the whole state of Nevada. Let's deselect this now. Let's do a couple more adjustments. In here, let's go back to dashboard, actions. Let's add another filter action. So under add action, let's add a filter action. And this time, what's important to note is that when we are targeting, we can target other dashboards as well. So we don't need to stay in the current dashboard. We can navigate to a different dashboard. So for this example, maybe we want to see all customers in a specific state. So we're going to run this on menu. Let's change the name, show all customers in a specific state. So we can insert that value so that it shows up in the menu name. So let's look for state, show all customers in state. And maybe this is only running from the sales map. So let's uncheck both and we can go to a different target dashboard. So on the drop down, there is a customer details dashboard. Let's select that and clearing the selection. Again, we're just going to leave it as is. We are going to keep the filtered values. As with the previous example, we are going to only set selected fields because we don't want it to filter by the city, but only by the state. Select state. Let's search for that. So state. And that's the only one we're going to use and pass to the second dashboard. Let's click OK. Click OK. So what we expect is if we select any mark in this map, so for example, Nevada again, we will see a menu item a hyperlink to a different dashboard. So this tells us we want to show all customers in Nevada. Once we click on this, it takes us to a brand new dashboard. If we investigate this worksheet, just to double check, if we go back to this worksheet, we do see a new filter in the filter shelf. Now, from a user experience perspective, this is probably where we can start combining different objects in Tableau. If, for example, we navigate to this dashboard from another dashboard, at this point, there is no easy way for us to go back to the original dashboard. And in this case, we are going to use navigation. So we can just simply say, go back to home or go back to the original dashboard. So let's bring this over as a floating item. So I'm going to select a floating, drag navigation to the top right corner, and let's edit this navigation button, edit button. And this one, all we're doing is we're navigating back to the original dashboard. So in here, we want to go back to the overview dashboard. This is simply going to be a text. And we can simply say, go back to home, go back to main dashboard. A few other things we can adjust, border, background, perhaps a tooltip. We can even change the type of the button. Right now we're using text, but if we had an icon that we can just use, we can also just use an image icon. So let's click on OK. Now let's move this up and perhaps in here, we probably need to just resize this a little bit. So it looks like this. Now currently on design view, this is not going to work just yet. In design view, if you are not using the preview mode, you are going to press alt and then click to navigate back to your target dashboard or worksheet. So if I press alt right now and then click, I go back to the original one. However, if I am on presentation mode, if I click on this, maybe search for customers in Nevada, then I don't need to press Alt anymore. I can simply just click and then go back and forth. As a bonus, let's take a look at how we can make this slightly more user-friendly for our audience. Let's click on a state, for example, Nevada. Let's show all the customers in Nevada. Right now, there is no easy way for us to know how many customers actually matched. If we have access to Tableau Desktop, we can easily see at the bottom that there are 23 rows. Therefore, there are 23 customers. But let's add a message somewhere in our sheet that tells us how many customers were matched. And this can entail using a table calculation expression. So let's go to this worksheet. Let's create a new calculated field. So create this new calculated field. Let's call this number of customers matched. And then here, we are going to use a table calculation function called total. So it's going to be total. 
and then count distinct of customer IDs. And let's click on apply. If we display this to our detail, because this is already in our canvas, we can provide it in our title. So let's double click on the title right now. And in here, we're going to type in number of customers matched in, and then let's display our state. And let's type in this calculated field. So under insert, it's going to be the number of customers matched. Let's format this a little bit differently, maybe a little bit smaller. And in here, number of customers matched in Nevada is one. So right now, what we are seeing is an incorrect value. How come this is picking up number of customer matched in Nevada as one? We have to remember that table calculations are always going to be affected by scope and direction. And right now, if we take a look at this table calculation, let's click on this drop down, compute using, it is actually using table across. And if we take a look at table across, there is indeed just a single customer. So what we need to do in here is we need to count all of the customers for all of the table. And we have a couple options that will allow us to do that. So it's not going to be table across. Let's try table down. So on the drop down, compute using table down, and let's display this field again. It's going to show up as a missing field at this point because we have changed the calculation. But if we insert number of customers matched, so now the number has changed to four to seven. But what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at this table calculation again. If we click on the drop down and then edit the table calculation, what we are seeing under specific dimensions is there are two check marks, one for customer ID and one for customer name. Within the specific dimensions, anything that is checked is actually the direction. Anything that is unchecked will be the group or the scope. So in here, what it's telling us is it's only considering this as a group. So for example, 2019, and it's counting the number of customers only for 2019. For 2019, what we are seeing is one, two, three, four, five. There are five customers there. Let's say for 2020, it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we are seeing a range of values. And again, this is not what we want. So we are going to do one more adjustment. Instead of just table across or table down, we are going to consider either a table across then down or table down then across. And notice that the big difference if you pay attention to this section, once we move to table across and down, then year of order date is going to be part of the direction. So if we decide to use across and down, then it's going to go this way first, and it's going to go to the next one until it covers the full table. So let's try that out and see if that gives us the correct result. So across and down, we can verify that under specific dimensions, all of our dimensions are checked off. Therefore, they're all part of the direction. Let's close this and let's update our field. Again, this changes again because we've changed the measure another time. So here it's going to mention to us that this is a missing field. Let's insert this one more time. Number of customers matched and perhaps change this color a little bit. And maybe let's uh, highlight state as well. And let's click OK. So number of customers matched in Nevada right now is 23, and that matches the number of marks that we are seeing on screen. Let's try this one more time for a different state. Let's go back to our overview. And this time, perhaps let's take a look at Wyoming. Show all customers in Wyoming. And it looks like we only have one, maybe one more try. Let's try Arizona. We have a few more points in here. Show all customers in Arizona. It says we have 100 customers, and if we take a look at the number of rows, we do have a 100.